Well, everybody's talking about magnesium. My patients can't talk about magnesium enough. They want to know magnesium, magnesium, magnesium. So let's talk about magnesium. Now, magnesium probably is the most important mineral you're not getting enough of. From energy production to heart health to sleep, digestion, and even your mood, magnesium plays a role in over 300 processes in your body. Yet, most people are dangerously low in magnesium, and they don't even know it. So today, I want to talk you through what magnesium is, why you're not getting enough of it, and options that are out there. First of all, magnesium is an essential mineral that's involved in multiple, probably 300 biochemical processes. It's critical for energy production. That's ATP. It's critical for nerve signaling, muscle function, and bone health. It supports heart rhythm. I can't tell you how important it is for supporting your heart rhythm. It supports avoiding cramping in your legs in the middle of the night. It also is critical for maintaining blood sugar balance and healthy digestion. Now, most Americans are deficient in magnesium primarily because of soil depletion. Our soils, as I've written about before, are so depleted in minerals that we used to get, and still should, most of our minerals from plants that are grown in mineral-rich soil. And I have a slide that I give to doctors and medical students when I'm talking to them at Grand Rounds. There's a slide from a U.S. Senate document and the document says that our soil is so depleted of essential nutrients that one would have to eat continuously all day and still never get the amount of essential nutrients that the body needs. Eat continuously. And I asked them, so when do you think that document was introduced in the Senate? And people go, oh, you know, maybe 2000. Uh, oh, maybe 1980. It was 1936 when this document, nearly 90 years ago, they knew back then that our soil was nutrient depleted. And imagine what it's like now. Now, here's another thing that's kind of a fun fact. Normally, plants absorb nutrients from the soil through their roots. Guess who makes those nutrients in the soil available to the plant to absorb through the roots? Go to the head of your class if you said the soil microbiome, because you're right. It's the bacteria and fungi that live in a normal soil that actually deliver magnesium in this case, into the plant's roots. And without that microbiome, there could be minerals in the soil, but the plant can't absorb them without the bacteria and the fungi literally opening the doors. Why is that so important? Because if you're paying attention, you know our soil for commercial crops is now devoid of a microbiome. It's sterile. We've killed off the organisms in our soil. So even if our soil had these minerals, we can't absorb them into the plants. And that's why if you look at any of the minerals like magnesium that used to be in plants, they're like a tenth of what we used to have 100 years ago. And that wasn't even very good. So the point is one of these most essential minerals for your health overall just isn't in our environment anymore. So we have high stress. And interestingly enough, we use up magnesium the more stressed we are. We process all our foods. You're not going to see a beautiful piece of Swiss chard made into a energy bar. Sorry, it's just not going to happen. Besides, that Swiss chard, which might have had magnesium before, doesn't have anymore. So this deficiency 
again, can contribute to fatigue, certainly to muscle cramps, poor sleep, irregular heartbeat, and even anxiety. Not to mention magnesium is critical for the normal peristalsis, the movement of our intestinal tract. Now, there's been a lot of talk about SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. One of the things we know about people who actually have SIBO, that's mainly because the small bowel is not moving properly with a not enough regular peristalsis and speed to move food and bacteria through the small bowel to the colon. And guess what determines a lot of the speed of movement of the small intestine? If you guess magnesium, you're right. So it's no wonder that we're seeing this dysmotility as a part of, quote, SIBO. Okay, there are lots of different types of magnesiums. And I've found through the years working with my patients that there is no correct choice. There is no one size fits all. Almost everybody responds differently to the amount of magnesium and the type of magnesium. Classically, milk of magnesia is concentrated magnesium. And as anyone who has used milk of magnesia, it works really good. It works by pulling water into the intestines, and it works by stimulating smooth muscle cells. Now, the problem with milk of magnesia is it kind of works, but it's really not a way to absorb magnesium. It makes you have a bowel movement, but that's not a long-term solution. Now, the second solution that we use in the hospital to produce a bowel movement is magnesium citrate, sometimes called mag citrate. And it usually comes in a green glass bottle and you drink it and it has its desired effect. But we're increasingly seeing now magnesium citrate tablets or capsules in smaller dosages. And it'll work It'll make bioavailable magnesium. But I tend to shy away from it as a first choice because there really is a slippery slope between just enough to get your magnesium levels up and too much that's going to cause loose bowel movements. So it's not way up on my list. Now, there's magnesium glycinate. Now, that's best for relaxation and sleep and calming the nervous system. So Magnesium glycinate is great for a bedtime magnesium. I particularly like magnesium at bedtime because of its sleep effects. And just remember that glycine, which is the amino acid in glycinate, has been shown to promote sleep by actually lowering body temperature. And it's a great trick that I use with my patients. Now there's magnesium malate. This may support energy production and muscle recovery a little bit better. There's magnesium L-threonate. Now, this is one of the only magnesiums that's been known to cross the blood-brain barrier. And there are studies that show it supports brain health and memory, but it's expensive. And number two, I don't see it promoting improved magnesium blood levels in my patients. But if memory is your interest, then magnesium L3 and 8 is the way to go. And just remember, you'd have to take a lot of it, and compared to the other magnesiums, it's quite expensive. Magnesium oxide, it's cheap, but it's poorly absorbed. And it's often used in antacids and other laxatives. Now, my favorite is potassium magnesium aspartate. Why? Because in my patients, the two missing minerals are both potassium and magnesium, and they really complement each other. They're both critical for supporting nerve health and muscle health. And in my patients who are subject to cramping and nighttime cramping, 
It's a one-two punch. In my patients who suffer from extra beats on their EKG or on their heart monitors, it's my first step in normalizing heart rhythm, potassium, magnesium, aspartate. And there are various forms on the market. Sometimes you'll see it magnesium, potassium, aspartate. Sometimes you'll see it potassium, magnesium, aspartate. It's the same stuff. Magnesium chloride, well absorbed, but a lot of people don't like the stomach effect of magnesium chloride. So those are all the choices that you have. Now, what about the dose? This is very individual. I usually start with a dose of about 400 milligrams at night of, of any of these, but you have to titrate them. I have some men that I need 1,600 milligrams of magnesium to get my desired effect of normal magnesium levels, normal mus muscle health, normal bowel health. I have some women that as little as 250 milligrams of magnesium will cause loose bowel movements. So there's no universal right dose. But what you want to do is find the dose that's effective for sleep, for mood, for cognition, without causing loose bowels. And you have to find that dose individually and enjoy experimenting with it. There is no proper right dose. Are there magnesium rich foods? Well, yes and no. You have to realize that our soil is really depleted in magnesium. The classic leafy greens like spinach, Swiss chard, arugula are rich in magnesium and polyphenols. And the good news is they feed your gut microbiome. Avocados actually have a pretty good dose of magnesium in them. Plus, they've got a lot of gut healthy fiber. Nuts and seeds, hemp seeds, walnuts, and pistachios all provide magnesium. But please stay away from sunflower seeds and pumpkin seeds, even though you hear that they're rich in magnesium. They're loaded with lectins. Interestingly enough, extra dark chocolate greater than 72% is a pretty good source of magnesium. And don't forget about all those great polyphenols. Okra and broccoli and broccoli rabe or rabe. These are also really good sources of magnesium. Olives are loaded with magnesium. And please enjoy your olives. All of the cruciferous vegetables have magnesium. but just beware that our soil is so depleted with magnesium that for the most part, most people have to add magnesium as a supplement to their diet. One final thought. A number of my patients, particularly women, just are intolerant to even small supplementation with magnesium because their bowels get loose. The workaround is the old tried and true classic Epsom salts. Epsom salts are magnesium salts that are absorbed through your skin. You can also buy what's called magnesium oil. Now, it's not an oil. It just feels slippery and greasy, but it's magnesium salts in a spray form. The great thing that I've seen in my patients is you will absorb the magnesium. You will get the benefit from lack of cramping, you will get the mood benefit, but you don't get the side effect of loose bowels. So if you're one of those people who say, I, I'm sorry, I just can't tolerate magnesium, try either an Epsom salt bath or soak, or just get yourself some magnesium oil spray. It's been a real game changer for a lot of my female patients. More amazing episodes just like this one. Watch now. So when you see dark spots forming, it's not just surface level discoloration. It's a visible warning sign of tissue damage that could be affecting your entire body.